All right, all right, all right. We are back, and I don't even know what episode this is. What episode are we in right now, Aaron? I know you know. Cinco, number five. Cinco, numero cinco. Speaking of cinco, I don't know. For some reason, when you said cinco, the Spanish is really good, man. I've been, I've been preparing. We got some uh, top notch interviews coming up over the next what few months. So mm. I gotta be prepping. Got to be doing my Rosetta Stone. Got to be prepping up a little bit. But also, we'll do a nice little segue here. We got Ooh. something. I got some cool news for you. Do you? Yeah. This is. We're even putting it outside the box. This is. Oh, this is I'll, bigger than the box. What? It's not even in the box. Not even in the box. Real quick before we even go there, did you put something in the box today? Of course. Always. Always. Every episode. All right. I'm gonna next episode. I got something for you. Oh, for me. But. Tell me what's outside of the box. Tell me the big news. So we have seen. some huge news from from Wall Clipper. Um, it actually will have happened after this recording. We have a new subsidiary. We have a new office. A new office. Can I guess where it is? I'm pretty confident you know where it is. All right. Can I announce it? Yeah. Heck yeah. We are live in Mexico. Yes. While Mexico has opened up, it's our 28th subsidiary 28th office around the globe so we talk about we're a worldwide country we have now 28 offices across the globe we've opened our newest one now in in mexico um it's been a long time coming but it's it's really exciting um it's a big deal it is it is a worldwide company yeah absolutely you know we always talk about how important it is to to get closer to the customer and there's there's no better way than to be present in that in that area in that territory, and we've been working really hard um, with this merger. Uh, our, my good friend Raúl Saavedra, yes, uh, territory manager, has been been working really hard. He's obviously uh, just just a piece of of everything that's gone into it, but For sure. it's really really exciting. And I know you've you've played a big part in kind of this announcement launch, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I've been behind the scenes, so you know, just working behind the scenes on with Raul and the whole Mexico team uh, on, on a launch event that we're having uh, over in Mexico. So it's going to be very, very special. We have a lot of uh, the corporate uh, workers. We have people from all over, distributors, you know, invitation only event. It's going to be very, very beautiful. We did send out invite to my good friend, Aaron. I don't know if Aaron will make it, but if he doesn't, we will make sure that we capture that on video. Yeah, I got some bad news. It's my daughter's birthday, oh, so it's all right. Happy birthday! We're sir. we're a family company, so family comes first. But yeah, no, it's very exciting. And you know, I've been with Wall for almost ten years now. Wow. This is our first subsidiary that we've owned or expanded to since I've been with the company. Oh wow! Um, we have we've opened a couple factories since I've been there, so we have seven factories across the globe and now 28 offices like that's such a huge deal and uh we're really excited we're really proud of all the hard work that's been into it and now we're ready to just hit the ground running with it so yeah pretty pretty darn excited and uh you know i think we'll have to get raul um on the podcast to talk more about it in the future for sure i'm totally down for that i would love to have raul here and i think by then i'll be able to show you a few more things in spanish so that you can you know Get it going. Yeah, I'm learning. Do you know what comes after Cinco? Seis. Ooh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, uh, huge shout out to Wall Professional. We have expanded over to Mexico, and I can't wait to show you guys uh, this little launch video that we'll be showing eventually. Yeah, soon enough. But let's let's hop over to the the box. Yeah. I, Should we do the box? Yeah, I put something in the box for you today. Oh, I can't wait. I think I think that's why I'm hearing the sirens. I'm hearing sirens. I'm hearing sirens. Something is is going on in here. I this time guys, I really don't know what's in the box. Most of the time I kinda like sneak peek, but today I don't know. Huge shout out to everyone that is listening over on Spotify. We're on Spotify. We're YouTube. on YouTube. YouTube, of course. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I thought you were gonna say Apple Pie. I was about to be like, "Yo, you know what? I would, I would love one." All right, let's see. In the box. What is this? It's paper. It's a piece of paper, guys. 
All right. The paper says America's Beauty Show. Boom. Yeah, America's Beauty Show, ABS Chicago, April 9th through 11th. We're, of course, going to be there. Ooh. We have a star-studded cast that's going to be there, a lot of our Chicago folks. So you're going to have G Wiz, uh, Miguel Rosas, uh, a.k.a. New Style 84. You've seen a lot of his portrait work. You've seen a lot of his fading. Um, he, he does a lot of – he does some incredible – fade work with just detailers um which is pretty unique um taylor levin who's one of our newest uh team members she'll be there and then uh mr how to fade hair you might know him as the naha 2021 men's hairstylist of the year nieves almarez will be there i love it i love it well there you go america's beauty show abs april 9th through 11th 2022 you guys are all invited i got a special guest there's a good friend of mine who has been doing movies. I, I think they're like movies to me, but this guy is amazing videographer. I figured that we bring a videographer to the podcast. Yeah, heck yeah. I mean, I don't know if you could see him. He's probably sitting right across from you, but the special guest of today, will you help me introduce him? Yeah. Mr. Gio Calero. Ooh, give it up for Gio. Yes. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Gio, what's happening, man? How are you? Just here, you know, enjoying the Orlando weather. So, first question, how weird is it to be on the other side of the camera? It's a little weird, you know, it's a little weird. It's not weird because, you know, I've been recorded, but uh, to be asked about videos while being recorded, that this is a little, <laughs> a little strange. I'm excited to have you here, Gio. Um, excited to be here. You are so talented. It is kind of strange to me as well, since I've worked with him in many states and countries yeah, a lot of where work. he's the one that's behind the camera, but now he's in front of the camera. I just thought it was funny because he, Gio was meeting up with, with Ali and they're looking at cameras together <laughs> and they're just like, they're like kids in a candy store talking <laughs> about like every, you know, it's, it's like barbers when they get together exactly, talking about yeah. clippers and trimmers. Right. Like they're just like, oh, do you have this Lumix and this Canon? I'm, I'm just sitting there like, uh, they're not speaking words. But. <laughs> it's like barbers, yeah. You know, when, when they speak about whatever, you know, tool or, what you know, things that happen in the barbershop. Same thing with, uh, with Ali, you know, just kind of, this is our world. And for those that don't know, Ali is behind the cameras today on our yes. podcast. He he does all of our podcasts. Huge shout out to Ali. So, Gio, um, you've been a videographer for how, how many years before anything? People ask me that all the time, and I, I don't know what the answer is, but since I was a kid, okay. uh, when I was maybe, I don't know, 12 years old, uh, my parents bought a camcorder, and I like to create stuff. And since then, I would make like little movies on on big VHS tapes Ooh. and I would record and pause it and then watch. Uh oh, then, you're aging yourself. I'm old. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Um, but professionally, uh, like making money and living off of it. Uh, man, it's gotta be like seven years now. Wow. Yeah. You know, um, you know, but I've always had uh, just a creative itch. So whether it's creating, uh something video wise or creating something digitally uh 3d or motion graphics or whatever the case is you know you know he's he's going deep there you know he's talking about motion graphics something digital uh <laughs> something special about geo which we'll talk about that so, i know you're going to talk about it very soon but th this guy knows so much it's like i've never met someone that knows so many different programs so like i'll just throw it out there photoshop illustrator adobe after effects premiere like so many things in one person but do you know iMovie i do <laughs> <laughs> how did you i movie is really that? good by the way huh? how did you even get to like learn all that did you go to school for it no like i said i just always had a um, i did i did go to school um kind of a waste of time if, in my opinion with the because uh Especially nowadays, when it comes to creative stuff, I feel like you have the internet to like answer questions like mm -hmm. on the spot. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I always had an interest in anything creative. You know, like my brother wanted a, a bar, and I said, "Hey, I'll, I'll build it for you." You know, and I, I made this Iron Man bar with like 
Iron Man's face with the lights. So, so, I, so like it could be anything digital or just in, in life. I just uh-huh. it's just the um the need to create something, I guess, you know? For sure, for sure. He's a he's a creative person. <laughs> I can't like put two sticks together, so <laughs> <laughs> kind of opposites in that in that aspect but that's why like this relationship works out is uh, you, you, i think of stuff and then ali actually or ali yeah and ali, Gio, ali ronald, ronald all of yeah, our ronald, videographers we work with like they they make it happen for sure yeah they really do and you told us a little bit about that the fact that you started very young now you have been in our industry for some time now creating yeah creating you know you know a lot about hair you know what we want to be sh- like want to show what we want to display if it's a tool if it's the hair if it's the haircut if it's the hair color how did you even get into the hair part um man so yeah a lot so i have uh, in my family there's been family members that were like my grandmother was a hairstylist for a while wow. um i had cousins that were you know that cut hair and um and then i remember like learning about like you know once instagram started to become a thing learning that there were barbers are popular and i'm like <laughs> like that makes no sense um but long story short um i, I worked with a bunch of barbers and then i got right. a bunch of uh you know the clientele from the barber world just you know since you know since everybody knows each other right um you know i just i've done a ton of work with just a lot of barbers i've been to I've been, to, I think, to more barbershops than many barbers, you know, like in different countries. And yeah, um, I've been to so many barber events. I, f- I feel like I can cut hair if I wanted to like, I because I've been in so many classes and edited so many tutorials. And, you know, I just haven't been hands on with the tools. But um, but yeah, it's been man. Sometimes it's kind of crazy to think, you know, that the, the barber industry, you know, kind of adopted, you know, videography. I think a lot of barbers also are creatives, like myself. For sure. Um, where it's where the medium is for me primarily video, you know, um, but for a barber the medium is hair. But a lot of barbers are, you know, they creative. A lot of barbers can paint. A lot of barbers, um, you know, have other creative abilities. But the hair is what, I guess, paid the bills at one point, and then that turned into a career. But I think at heart, you know, we're all the same have the same creative like need so uh, you know yeah so i've been yeah the barber industry has just been yeah it's, uh, yeah a blessing me, it's been a, a, a big blessing it's been fun um got a lot of good friends now over the years like yourself and aaron and uh yeah that because of this industry you know not necessarily the the, the videography industry but the barber industry you know yeah it's great to hear the symmetry between you know, videography and, and barbering or uh, hairstyling, like it is that creative side. Yeah. So it's, you just have different canvases and that's exactly. how you work. But can you talk a bit about like how challenging is it as a professional videographer to film, especially like haircutting, like tutorials, like talk about that challenge because yeah. I, I got to say, it's probably gotta be really hard because if you miss a shot, like yeah, exactly, that hair is not coming back. Yeah, yeah. There's there's that part. There's the the hair isn't coming back. You know, unless we do some movie magic and wait a, a month, you know, for it to grow back, right. which that's not gonna happen. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Um, I think at, at some point you just know what you have to do. Some po- at some point you get comfortable with being annoying. Like hey, let's 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 do it again. Let's take that shot again. Can you pretend to cut there for a second just so I can get that shot? Um, and some people get it. Um, there's some other people that might think we don't need to record this part you know like once the shoot is over um or the event is over i leave with what i have i can't i can't manifest a moment so i you know sometimes i have to like overshoot and like record a ton and then um once the the shoot or the event's over that's when like that's when the work starts then i have to go and edit and i think people forget that part yeah that's a part that's like I think forgotten really quick. Yeah, there's like know? a there's like maybe more than double the amount of time and effort. It's like they have triple the triple jobs. Yeah, in my head, like from you know being around all the videographers, including Geo, they'll film, you know, and they'll be filming the influencer, the educator, whoever, whoever it is, the tool, etc. You gotta understand what it is that yeah. the deliverable needs to be and. Right, and then they have to go back to their ho- like if they're traveling, they have to go back to their hotel, and then like. 
since it's a lot of files and they're probably heavy and like 4k and then they have to dump it into their drive or whatever to clear out the memory card organize and then organize it, it in yeah. it is <laughs> a whole nother job which and i've seen I'm like, i have oh like God. stacks of hard drives i was just I gonna you. ask you how many hard drives <laughs> do you it's, have it is crazy i have i have a a, a a drawer like a you know you put your clothes you know yeah just so i could put the hard drives in it can you take you a know. picture of it and so we could put it on the podcast <laughs> i'll take a picture of it yeah. yeah i'll take a picture of like a, a a few stacks of them okay i have yeah it's um but you know, that's, that's, of it. that's the easy part you know like <laughs> like you know transferring but right. then the edit um and then the stress that comes with like oh man i didn't capture this or oh my god that was you know out of focus or things that we have to kind of like fix later mm. you know and there's a there's a term that is said a lot in um in the video world where it's like we'll fix it in post and i hate those words you know it's like no let's get it right now because if you're you know if you're a busy videographer you kind of can't have time wasted in post you know because you know you have you have work to uh, to deliver and sometimes you know we get so busy that it takes time to like finish one thing the next thing the next thing to deliver but yeah i forget where i, where I was going with it but um but yeah i think that the, the the organizing is easiest. It's it's the other things where we have to fix certain things or figure out how to, you know. There was one thing that was actually for uh, for Wall where I didn't get a shot of a clipper on on like the barber stand. So I I so when I got to my office, I had to go and go to Home Depot and build like a little mini like station, you know, wow. like uh, so that it, you know. And then I got like this brick wall that I put together um, just to get a shot that matched, you know. So. Wow. But those things, you know, nobody will will see it. Or, or you it's know. all behind the scenes. Yeah. And so. you're saying you built something. Does that mean you have like your a studio? You have somewhere where you? Yeah. So I have um I have a, like a an office slash studio. You know where I can uh, go that edit. Where um, where is where is it that? Oh, so I uh for those that I don't know, I live in Rhode Island. For those that don't know what that is, it's the, it's a state. <laughs> is, it, is that a state or a city? Sorry, <laughs> Rhode Island I'm is. A, I live in Providence. Providence is, is the, a city or the city, the capital of Rhode Island. Much love to all the people from so. Rhode Island. There's a lot of talent there. You know, also yeah. our good friend Ro- Ro- uh, Ronald. Ronald is well. from there. Yeah. I was gonna call him Rhode Island. <laughs> Ronald, <laughs> our good Rhode friend Island Ronald. Ronald. <laughs> Ronald and Gio, two of the like I I feel like two of the uh, industry's leading videographers. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of yeah, talent sure. out there, but we yeah, love, you. A lot we of love talent, your work. Yeah. I don't want to shout out to all the videos. I, I didn't claim that. But. I, I, I claimed it. <laughs> I'm I, think, sorry. I think what always fascinates me, too, with with your work, with a lot of videographers is like you just ha- have to remember like everything that you filmed, because like you said, you you capture pretty much the entire day. Like you're you're rolling, you're doing B-roll and all that. But then you get to editing. It's a lot. It's like six seven eight hours of film <laughs> and it's for a two three minute exactly, video yeah. so yeah. it's like impressive to know like okay i remember it was around noon we we captured this part this is you know like that kind of that kind of memories is pretty impeccable because not only that like you're probably not editing sometimes you are but you're probably not editing like tomorrow like you're editing like yeah. a week after so so like tonight i'll edit but something that was shot you know prior to this you know like i, w- I wouldn't uh, if I had a shoot today, I wouldn't go and, you know, unless it was something that was like, hey, we need this right, right. away, you know, then my priorities would, would change. But, um, yeah, like the other night we shot all day and then I go back to the room, I dumped the footage, but then I had to finish an edit for somebody else. You know, then next thing I know, my days are like 13, 14 uh, days of work. It, don't, it doesn't feel like it because, you know, um, I really enjoy what I do. Um, but, yeah, so like some of the stuff I just can't edit right away. You know, unless there's like a real heavy pressure to. There's only 24 you know. hours in a day, so there's only yeah. so much you can yeah, do. Geo just edits 24 hours. Yeah, <laughs> this guy is a machine. My, my days <laughs> off is when my brain just doesn't focus. You know, like like I don't, like you know, some sometimes I say you know I'm gonna take the weekends off and I'm gonna force myself not to work. But my days off, uh, and I'm not sure if any other videographer, you know, can relate, but would be the days that my my brain just tells me you can't today. I can't right now. <laughs> yeah, you just can't. It's a weird feeling. It's like uh, it's called burnout, um, which I think we all feel it. But there's some days it's just it's just impossible. Ali's shaking his head. Yeah, Ali's there. like, yes, I green. know. I um, think we all get burnout. Yeah. It doesn't matter what our profession yeah, is. Like yeah. it, it just happens to all of us. But yeah, there are. You're right. There are just times when you're just like, I can't. Yeah, because it's, it's mostly function. mental. You know, yeah. when it comes to like editing, 
it's like having patience to, you know, if you have uh, the right, like, laptop and things, you know, you can kind of get through it, edit smooth, you know. But sometimes, um, man, it's an emotional roller coaster. Your laptop is slow, <laughs> and then you're like, you want to slam it. And then <laughs> so I have a really yeah. good question for you. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of barbers, hairdressers, stylists, students watching and hearing what we're talking about right now. And I believe that content is something huge nowadays. Yeah. Uh, social media content like videos photography you know high quality uh, raw organic what is a good starter camera that you can recommend to a barber or stylist that wants to just create good good quality content well first first of all the camera that is going to convert I think or, or have the most engagement is in your pocket yeah it's the phone um, there's times where I'll like take my phone out just to like see the composition so I don't have to like grab my my uh, camera and put the lens on and everything and then I'll, I'll say to myself like this looks kind of better than my camera you know <laughs> and I got you know I have an expensive camera you know like, with an expensive lens I mean obviously it's not the same thing you know it's um I have a lot more control and uh with with what I have as far as the camera you know as far as like uh what I shoot with professionally but the phone is going to get you a lot more engagement and it's also uh you have it it's in your pocket and you can edit on your phone. There's like so much you can do with your phone. And my philosophy is um, there should be a lot more organic stuff that's free. Right. And then, you know, if you're a brand that wants to like be established, of course you need some prof- some production. For the most part, you have this this tool in your pocket that gets a ton of engagement. People, you know, if you understand how to use it, um, you know, go on YouTube you know, and find ways to uh, to maximize what you have. You know, sometimes pe- people will ask me, like, what camera should I get? Should I get this camera or that camera? And I'll say, um, well, it doesn't matter. You, you can get, like, the camera that, that, you know, like an Ari, which is used in movie sets. But if you, if you don't know how to maximize what you have already, then there's no point of getting a new camera. If you don't understand that thing to the fullest, um, then a new camera isn't going to, you know. But I would say the, your, your phone understanding the lighting which is going to amplify the quality of whatever you're recording um, but if somebody does want to get into um you know something beyond that um i don't want to shout out any brands because i don't know if this is a <laughs> no you, you can tell you can tell us uh, a brand of, yeah. of camera lens like, any anything yeah like yeah. uh you know i started with canon so uh i think nowadays there's like better choices um like a canon m50 which is I don't know how much it costs, but it's pretty, it's pretty cheap, I guess, compared to other cameras. It's like, I'm not sure how much it costs. I don't want to uh, misquote it, but what, what is there a certain lens that you you would say the, that? Um, I hear a lot nifty fifty. The nifty fifty, yeah, because it's it's so cheap. What and is this nifty fifty thing? It's like a ninety dollar, one hundred twenty dollar. I forgot how much it costs, but a uh, lens that's like plastic and it's a fifty millimeter focal length, and the uh, it's a low aperture, meaning you can get like nice blurry backgrounds for for a low price and it's and it just it's a good starter but if you want to have some range you might want to get a zoom but at Aaron's that point face, sorry i'm laughing because Aaron's face if you guys are watching us on the <laughs> video you'll see like, he's just like aperture iso <laughs> look i'm gonna say man. this if you want to if you want to before you buy a camera learn what iso is iso learn what aperture is learn how to affect depth of field or create it learn focal length uh, but I would say aperture, uh, ISO, shutter speed, frame rate. Like what I'm saying now, if, write it down, look it up. Um, and if you understand those things, you know, then you can start to work. And, and even if you already do uh, camera work and you, and you haven't really paid mind to any of that, mm. um, you'll get some really good footage if you have a vision. I'm getting know? like way smarter today. Yeah, this is, a lear- this is for learning purposes i didn't bring yeah. my notebook so I, I i have it in my head right now so we got the phone is probably the most powerful tool that the you can is. have uh because it has a camera already on there for video and for photography and, and everything that i mentioned you know as far as like look up these things uh your phone doesn't you, you can't change those those things but if there's apps that let you tap into mm. there's like uh, i forgot what the name of the app is but there's like camera pro i think or something i forget what it is but there's apps that let you control those Parts those of features. The, you know yeah. what I learned? 
what did I really need Ali to edit that part down for me so that I can get that <laughs> sent directly to me? So ah uh, yes yes <laughs> yeah and there's there's a bunch of other, like lighting is super important um yeah you, know, you spoke about editing yeah just give me one app that's good for editing videos on your phone the one that I use I don't know if it's the best because you know obviously I'm gonna edit on my uh, on my laptop um the one that I use is InShot. Insha, I use that one too. Yeah. So do I. Do you? Yeah. yeah. What? Like wow. five dollars, I think. You get yep. the logo removed, and um, yeah, there's you a, don't there's a lot of functionality. Logos. There's a ton of functionality in it. I use that yeah. one too. Well, now I, think I, it's easy. now I feel a little bit better. About now we know okay. some stuff. Yeah. Now we know some stuff. So, I used to edit on Sony Vegas. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Sony yeah. Vegas. I used to edit in iMovie. iMovie's good movie. too. Honestly, you know, if the sometimes the less options you have, the better because mm. then you're not like. Then you start editing, you know, without ad- adding a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. So you've been with Wall, working with Wall for about a little over two years now. Yeah. Um, what is, what's been your favorite project to work on with, with us? Man, there's been so many. It's like a favorite project. Hmm. There's no wrong answers here. Man, it's tough. It's tough because... Because, you know, there's people that uh, are involved in each project, you know. So for me, um, the experience, you know, it's like we did the Disruptor. That was that was cool because we, we were all together and going uh, to different states. And but man, my favorite, I can't, I, it'd be hard to say, to be honest. I can tell you mine. Um, I've I've loved your work. You've done like the Cape series. Those have been really cool. Oh, those are fun, yeah. Um, obviously, your disruptor edits are are always you know pretty fire, and um, Thank you. that that of course helped with attendance and like those are always sweet. I think my best experience with you is with the uh, BTC show. Oh yeah, um, that was yeah. You know the stuff that you helped capture in the booth, and then like the main stage and all that. Like that was yeah. just that was really and cool. that um, shout out to Jose from Booksy. Um, I worked with Jose and we would be up like late just cause we did, um, um, yeah, that was a good one because it wasn't just the video. I also did the, um, the graphics that went on. The you did the video screen. for the stage. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cool to, to like, to be capturing it, but then realizing like, wow, like, you know, that, that big screen has something that I, you know, that I, that's uh, inception. Edit. You're like videoing yeah, your video. <laughs> <laughs> so some way I was, you know, recording like part, a part of myself, but yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. That was, uh. And that was a collaboration too. So yeah, that was man. definitely one of my favorites as well. Yeah, that was. It was, it was a huge. We were in front of like event. the big crowd. Right. That was that crazy. Was, that event was awesome. Plus, yeah. like the video that 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 Geo captured and edited was amazing. Yeah, and that show. I mean, in general, it felt like a big leap for us. It's something that's kind of outside the box of what we normally do. But even from the video side, like the the eat, sleep, fade, repeat, the music, and the again the just the backdrop on that yeah. main stage as the models were coming yeah. out. And I know you, you had put a ton of work into that. Like that was like, that got you going like in the yeah. crowd, that, like, like kind of gave you goosebumps or it made you feel like something special. Yeah, going it, was, on. it was like, what, you know, it was so many people. Um, and I've been to like a bunch of events and I've been on, you know, on the stage, you know, just running around recording, but I think that was the biggest crowd I've seen, you know, it's a big crowd. Yeah. 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 And then like I said, the Cape, those were fun. Uh, Cause those were like just entertainment you know, really, um, but there's been so many, uh, so many projects, you know, that yeah, so it's, it's, it's be, it'll be hard for me to, well, we to just pick. worked on a project. Yeah. We just, we did we a just, lot of work. This, this week, we, so. We've been shooting all week. Yeah. I love, it. I love it. I noticed he didn't say that was his favorite. Uh, it's, it's just not it's done in, yet. It's in the process. It's in the process. You know, if it was no, done, I'm not going to lie, but it, it was cool because this is a project that, you know, pretty much, um yeah bird put together like this 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 idea oh you know project was was actually really fun sandbox uh yeah yeah that means that was very creative that was you know that one i was a little concerned i'm like man this is a little too creative you know um but uh it turned out to be you know um super artistic it was fun thanks and yeah it just comes from the head and a lot of a lot of barbers (laughs) comes off the top you know off the top yeah and and it's you know that's crazy that you even said that because like all right so you guys know i have a a, 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 
a segment that I call the Sharp Faith Freshman Class, where I look for barbers that are up and coming. And basically, last year we did Project Sandbox, where they had to like remake their own. A lot of good sandbox. stuff. And for they it to come out stuff. of my head into like, hit like you know, for me to kind of like pass my vision to him and him actually make it reality ronald also made a video and too. and yeah. shout out to ronald as well they both worked very very hard to kind of bring it to life it's just crazy you know it's like from one to the next and then to reality yeah that was yeah that was a, a well a we have function. something coming up soon so the one we just shot yes by yes, the way i want to shout out the barbers that submitted their like some of them i was kind of like oh wait a minute you know i was right? like i was like oh <laughs> kind of like there's better you know <laughs> um yeah that was, a, that was that was fun because that was something that created um you know other people to to react and create their own yeah we had know, a lot things. of submissions we had hundreds and hundreds of submissions so shout out to everybody that submitted shout out to rano geo and everyone who was a part of the shoot and then yesterday yesterday we shot at a studio but and yeah maybe when this releases you'll see a little bit of what we shot yeah oh yeah for sure all right so we'll probably put it up on the screen and by the way also one of my favorites too was the legend legend is when, when the legend was released La that was one my, yeah. oh i actually i'm that gonna take my, it back you know what my favorite thing is that you did and it's so subtle i want to see if i could guess it hold on no i can't go ahead it was the cordless clipper charge stand video. Oh, those are fun, yeah. So, and my favorite is the yeah. one that it just like keeps dropping, like, dropping, to... dropping. Like, that, yeah, that was cool. That yeah, got, a lot like, of those were impromptu. Like, all right, how do I? You know, it's like, like a 15 right. second video and that got like mad views on our page. Like, yeah, it's funny because that was one of the ones that was like, like on the spot. Like, all right, that what? was filmed while we were together. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah, we, we were, were in, the other in a room. different room. Yeah, you were you were in this room. We were at Hamburger in... University. It was in. Uh, oh yeah, at the McDonald's at, at the McDonald's old campus in yeah. Oak Brook, yeah, Illinois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were having a meeting in one room, and and Gio was making magic. In making another. Was magic, crazy. and actually fun. got a lot of views too. Yeah, I was man. It was, it was, it was yeah, it was fun. That was a real fun shoot. Yeah. So my remember. last question for you is: What advice do you have for up and coming? videographers especially ones that um or even barbers that want to kind of get into that that video space a bit more what what kind of advice do you have for them um so i'll say you know i look at it like this you know if if you have uh, especially for barbers to relate to this if you're really good you know um you won't need the best clipper to to do a fade or you know or a design you can use something that isn't the best you know um so don't get so hung up on having all the gear and having the most expensive anything, you know, just get good at it first, you know, master what you can, um, you know, up here first with the tools that you have. Um, I'll say that first, if you're, but if you're, uh, if you are a videographer that has, you know, some equipment and um, is good, you know, and kind of established, you know, don't be afraid to uh, to 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 charge what it what it costs because we were talking. It's not cheap, you know, to be a videographer. Um, and on top of that, um, I think a lot of people get caught up in in ch trying to get their foot in the door, and they never have, uh, they're never able to pay bills with you know with what they make on videography. So it always ends up being always a sec a side hustle. It's always a, a side hobby, um, and they're just never able to to like fully just become a videographer that kind of so, goes with our industry too I've, i have i had a lot of, of friends and of course you know be fair like you know it has to be fair um as a full-time videographer we don't have the same turnover as like a barber chair would you know right. so so yeah you just have to know if you're gonna do this get get good be fair be professional um be responsive uh you know, if you can't do something, just say you can't do it. You know, if you're going to be late, say you're going to be late. Reply to every text, every email. That comes first. And then the video stuff. But the professionalism is, is I think, the first thing that you have to have in check. If now you're you, giving too much advice. Yeah. Buy my course. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Buy his course. <laughs> I don't have a course. You don't even have a course right now. <laughs> what are you telling him? He doesn't have time to have a course. <laughs> you don't have time to have a course. But yeah, that's my advice. Well, Gio, it was a pleasure having Thank you, you for here having today. Me. Thank you so much for flying down from Rhode Island to nice, warm 
Orlando, yes. Florida. He yes. wants to stay here now. Yeah. The weather's yeah. nice. At least for another month <laughs> yeah, before the weather gets same nice as you. <laughs> up north. <laughs> you know. But appreciate appreciate you guys having me. Um yeah, I didn't expect to be on a podcast, but uh here I am. Thank you. Here you are in front of the camera, dude. Yeah. It's it's always great to work with you. It's always Likewise. a pleasure. I can't wait till the next project that we're on together. And this is this has been awesome. I've actually learned so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all yeah. learned. We all learned. So if you guys did learn a lot today, and if you didn't know who Gio was, and now you do, make sure you go check him out on all on Instagram, TikTok. He's all over the place. We'll leave his Instagram right down below on the screen so you guys can see it. Other than that, this has been Off The Top Podcast. Today I opened up the box and we had the ABS Mexico. show and we had Mexico news. Gio was in the building and Aaron, the co-host with me here, Bird Mena. We did it. On to the next episode. If you want to be invited, make sure you comment down below here on the YouTube. And if you're on Spotify, show some love. Adios, amigos. Hey. Peace.